In this video, I thought I would do a rundown of the top 10 favourite Linux distributions of mine. Now this is favourite to me, regardless of the fact of the score that I gave them during the review. And it goes back through the past three years. Hmm, I've been doing it a while now. So in the 10th place, we have Oz Unity version 1 debut. I think this was actually the first Linux distro I reviewed. <laughs> wow, things have changed since back then. Now I liked it for being, well, very beautiful distro to use, and it was based on Ubuntu 10.04, hmm. which sadly means it's no longer supported. But I used it for a while on my netbook. Worked perfectly. Now there's another beautiful Linux distro available, but this one has more customization than KDE, probably more beautiful than KDE as well, but it's lighter than LXDE. <laughs> you wouldn't think it's possible, but it's the E17 desktop. And the Linux distro I like with it is Bodhi Linux. Again, I've used this one on my systems before. Hmm, it's worked pretty well, actually. It's just, they give you all the ingredients, but give you the basics and you build your own distro. So in that respect, it's not really a good distro for new users. In eighth place, I've put what many people could agree was one of the best versions of Ubuntu. It's version 10.10. .10. It's another one that's no longer supported though. But this was their first release of their own custom font, and it was a bit more hmm, glossier than their previous releases. You could see the direction they were heading though with uh, entering the mobile world, and leading to what we have now with Unity. <laughs> but it was still a good distro. In seventh place, I've put a distro that STILL HAS NOT BEEN RELEASED! Get on with it! It's elementary OS. It's looking fantastic. Well, they've got their own custom theme between quite a few programs, and it's a lightweight desktop. It's run very well in the beta 1 version. I still haven't reviewed the beta 2, I'm probably not going to now at this point, it's, I've left it too late. But I'm still looking forward to what this distro is going to bring when it's finally released. Now if you were to tell a Windows user that you could have an operating system that's 12 meg large, and comes with a full graphical user interface, they would think you were absolutely insane. But there is one, Tiny Core Linux, and that's what I've put in sixth place. Again, this is another one that I've used quite a few times. But I've never really taken to it though, and I've never done a review of it. Hmm, I don't know why, but I probably because I only know enough just to use the basics of it. I know there's an awful lot you could do with it, and I know that I just <laughs> I've never done the research on how to use it properly. In fifth place, I've put Zorin OS 6 Ultimate. Now this is the previous release of Zorin, that was the long-term support. Now you could have one of six desktops in this distro. You could have one of three Windows desktops, or Unity, OS X, or GNOME 2 themed. Hmm, that was pretty good, and one of the few original distros that there are available. I suppose it's one I would actually advise to anyone who coming is coming from the Windows world and actually wants to stay with a traditional theme desktop, one that they're most used to. In fourth place, I've put a Linux distro that many people will probably disagree with the fact that it's actually a Linux distro. However, it has probably bought more people using Linux than any other distro around, has more apps available to it, again, than any other distro, and has started to bring the demise of Microsoft's Windows operating system. It is Android the mobile and tablet based OS that you can sort of get working on a computer. However, when I've tried it, it do not really work very well. Well, it works, but you can't get anything much for it because there's not many apps that are used to using the x86 CPU, so it doesn't do much. But I do like it on the mobile phone and I've liked my mobile and tablet so much that I've not tinkered with them and not broken it. I'm still using the OEM provided release of Android, which really pretty rubbish, but it works and I don't want any downtime on them. In third place, I've put a Linux distro that I've never reviewed and have no intention of reviewing despite many requests. I do, however, absolutely like their Wikipedia pages and they've saved me from more trouble than I care to mention with Ubuntu. It is Arch Linux. I respect this Linux distro so much because well, it's a rolling release, and you could have a distro that boots up in a few seconds, even off a rotational hard drive. And that's pretty good going. 
but I don't want to use it. It's more because of my speciality is with the Ubuntu and Debian based OS's, and if I start branching across to Arch, well, then I'm not going to be particularly good at it, but then I'll start spreading myself too thin, and I don't want to do that. I'm going to stick with what I know and what I can advise people with the best. So that's why I'm staying here. The distro in second place has amazed me really. The developers have gone the extra mile and made it probably what is the most complete and easy to use Linux distro available. It's Solid K. I absolutely like this distro. There's really not a lot I could fault it on. Okay, it's a bit out of date on KDE at the moment, but being a rolling release, at some point it will catch up. Yep, that's pretty good, and it has got, well, out of my current method of scoring, is the highest rated I've give, the highest rating I've ever given to a Linux distro, 95%. And it's one I absolutely recommend to new users. And in first place, we have the distro that is buggy, unstable, and slow. It's Ubuntu 13.04. Well, that's how it comes out the box. But I've customised mine by changing the kernel, updating the graphics card drivers, and doing a bit of tinkering in Compiz, and it works like a charm. I really like the transparency effects that Canonical have been implementing in this distro, and I really like the Unity desktop. I know a lot of people hate it, but if you actually try it out, you might actually like it. Hmm. It's surprising. Yet there's not much that can tear me away from it, which does mean I'm stuck with Ubuntu. That may not be a good thing, but I still like it for now. Anyway, that's the list of my 10 favourite Linux distros, so thanks for watching, see you later.